Welcome to another video. This is a math Olympiad problem and the mission is to find the maximum value of n if n and the square root of n squared plus 204n are positive integers. So this is a positive integer. This also will give you a positive integer. What is the maximum possible value of n? You would think that there shouldn't be a maximum, but there is, because not every number beyond a certain point will generate an integer. There's a maximum to it. Okay, we're going to do this problem. It involves a lot of things. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic, I had to think through it. You also had to use some number theory concepts, which are basic, but if you don't think about it, you won't see it. And the hardest part of this for me was supposed to be the easiest part. And I'm going to tell you when we get there. Let's get into the video. The first thing is to understand what we're being asked to find. We're supposed to find the maximum value of n. But this is the constraint we have because there's no maximum value to a positive integer. But this is what tells us what we should work on. Now, we're told that this part is a positive integer. So we're going to just say that let, so we're solving it, OK? And I'm going to see if I'm going to have enough space to do this. Let, let r be equal to the square root of n squared plus 204n. OK. So that means if I square both sides, I'm going to have r squared equals n squared plus 204n. You know, at some point I thought, what if this is an optimization problem? <laughs> but it's not an optimization problem because uh, this will have to lose the property of being a positive integer because when you start bringing in calculus, you can be dealing with just integers, right? Because it's not a continuous um, um, uh, process, okay? Now, so this is a perfect square. It means this has to be positive. This is because this is a square on the left-hand side. Now, but I really cannot express this as a square. This does not look like a square. So what I could do is do completing the squares, because if I complete the squares on the right, maybe I can express it as the square of a number, and then I can express the left-hand side also as a square of a number. So by completing the squares, I'm going to divide this by two, this coefficient here, and add it to this side. But because this is an equation, I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Remember that what we're looking for is the maximum value of n, but we cannot find it until we, we can have actual numbers because there's no number showing up here. But once I complete the squares, I'm going to have r squared, let's write it here, n squared plus 204n. Now, if I take half of this, it's going to be 102 then I need to square it, plus 102 squared. I'm going to leave it that way, okay? And then I'm going to add it to this too. So I have a nice equation. Now, because I've made this a perfect square, remember, what we started with is not what we have anymore. I have increased the right-hand side. I've also increased the left-hand side. So we have a different value right now, okay? So just to make things clearer, because this is a lot of, um, this is jargonified. So we're going to say that r squared plus 102 squared is equal to, let's call this k, okay? Let's write this as k squared. Let's say this is the same thing as the square of k. By the way, remember we made it a perfect square, so k is an integer. That's what I should have said, okay? Now, so if I move this r squared over to this side, this is what I'm going to have. I'm going to have k squared minus r squared will be equal to 102 squared. Now, I have to find a way to rewrite the difference of two squares 
as typically k minus r times k plus r. And I'm going to write this as, um, I know this number 102 is divisible by 2, so I can write it as 2 times 51 times 2 times 51. It's an easier way to deal with the, the, the size of the number. So I'm going to write it as 2 times 51. It's a habit I have once a number gets too big, I don't bother, bother to square. I just, I just leave it the way it is. So I got 2 times 51 times 2 times 51. Now, when you have, when you're trying to factor, because now I'm trying to see, because of this two, it's harder. You're going to get so many options. Let's minimize the options we have on the right hand side. And so let's talk about the evenness or the oddness of the numbers we have here. Now watch this. Because the right hand side is even, the left hand side must be even. That's a key. It, it saves you a lot of time. Because the right hand side is even, the left hand side must be even. If the left hand side is even, it means at least one of these two is an even number. And if you understand how addition and subtraction works, because we're using the same numbers, both of them must be even. Okay? There's, there's no odd number here. How do you know? Look, it's called the parity of, of a number. If, if it's if you have A plus B, and A is even, and B is also even. Sorry, you have A and B. A is even, B is even. If you add them, your answer is always even. Now, if both of them are odd, the same thing. The sum of two odd numbers is also always even. One more thing. The difference between two even numbers is even. And the difference between two odd numbers is even. <laughs> so you notice that if you have even numbers, whether you're performing subtraction or addition, as long as it is the same numbers and they have the same parity, it has to be even. So you, you see that if this is even, this must be even because you're using the same two numbers. The difference between them must be even because this one is even. So it's either they're both even, it's either they're both even or they're both odd. And if they're both even or both odd, that's what's happening. You always will get an even number. This one, you need it in order to make your life easy because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to divide both sides by four. So as to reduce the number of options I have here, so I don't have to guess so many times. So watch this. I'm going to say k minus r divided by 2 times k plus r divided by 2. Let's put parenthesis. So will be equal to 51 times 51. So now I know this is still an integer because it was even before it was divided by 2. This also is an integer. And now what I have on the right-hand side is odd. So clearly, these two numbers are odd numbers. It's crazy. Now I know because the product of two odd numbers has to be odd. If this is odd, this has to be odd. So now, this is an integer multiplying an integer. This has very limited options that I have because the factors here are 3, 17, 51, and 100, and, and the square of 51. 3, 7, because 51 is 3 times 17. So the options I have here are, look at my options. These are 3 times 17 times 51. Any combination of these, so you can multiply all three of them, or you can do um, 3 times 17 times 51, which is 51 times 51, or you multiply these two by 3, or there's one more option. What if it is the square? So let me just write, okay, leave it this way. I might as well say, let's add 1 to it, because I need that 1. So what I found out is, if you want to maximize n, 
if the value of n will be the biggest possible, then the value of r will have to be the biggest possible. And if r is as big as possible, it means the difference between r and k has to be as small as possible. And that was where the light bulb lit. Boom! And there I knew it, that if I have to look for the maximum value of r, then I had to find the minimum value of k minus r, and that's where 1 showed up. This has got to be 1. So see what I did. I said that k minus r over 2 times k plus r over 2 must be the smallest on the left, multiplying the biggest on the right. Squared. 51 squared. So what does that mean? It means that I can have two equations, k minus r over 2 is equal to 1, and I have k plus r over 2 equals 51 squared. What does this mean? It means I have k minus r equals 2, and this means k plus r equals 2 times 51 squared. Let me write it this way, 51 squared. I still don't want to square that, okay, because I don't know how to do it. Now I can solve a system of equations. Remember, I'm interested in r, not in k, so I'm not going to solve for k. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the first equation from the second one. So this minus this is going to give me 2r, and then this minus this is going to give me 2 times 51 squared minus 2. Okay, that's what I get. And when you solve this system, this um, equation, not solve, yeah, we can solve this actually. Look, divide everything by 2, you end up with, which is the same thing as 51 minus 1 times 51 plus 1. And that gives me 50 times... 15. What's that? With two zeros. So R is 2,600. Oh, I would have really messed up by doing mental math there. Okay, so R is 2,600 and we're almost home. How do I know we're almost home? Because now that we found what R is, we can go here. Where is it? Actually, this is the biggest ever that R could be. In fact, see how small we went here. We chose one, okay? There's nothing else that could have happened, okay, since we're dealing with integers. So here, we're going to go back and solve this equation. Once you solve this equation, now we, that we know what r is, we can know what n is. Let's see if this space is enough to solve that equation. So if we go back here, we know that n squared plus 204n and 4n, if we bring this r over here, it will become minus 2,600 squared will be equal to 0. That's the equation we need to solve. And this was the part that actually took me a while because I knew factoring was the way out since I was expected to get integers. I just couldn't figure out how to factor this. But ultimately, I figured out how to fa factor this, which is the traditional way. But to save time, I'm just going to write what the factors are supposed to be. So you got n squared. So what two numbers will you multiply to get 2,600? But when you add them together, you're going to get 204. Uh, well, the numbers are n squared plus... It's going to be positive, um, I think it's 2,704, yes, n, minus 2,500, minus 2,600 squared, equals zero. It took a while though, actually I spent the most time trying to do this because I wanted to show you how to do it, but no, let's just go on. Well, let's factor. If we factor this, we're going to get n into n plus 2704. What would you take out? You take out 2500 um, into n plus 
4 equals 0. So here, we know that n minus 2,500 times n plus 2,704 is equal to 0. And don't waste time trying to solve this because remember the condition said that n is a positive integer. So um, this one will not give us positive n. This is the only one that will give us positive n. This just implies that n is 2,000. 500. And that's the answer that we've been working for and working to find. <sighs> I hope I did not make a mistake. I think that's the answer, and I hope that everything I wrote makes sense. Leave a comment in the comment section. Please, if you like this video, give it a, give it, just give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, I think this is the time to consider it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.